Drift In to me is just the best feeling in the world. The adrenaline rush of going sideways, knowing that you're on the edge the whole time is a feeling that just you can't beat. It's the biggest adrenaline rush. <laughs> I'm Michelle Westby, I'm a drift racer. My love for cars actually started at a very young age, um, which is quite strange because my parents aren't actually into motorsport or cars themselves, but as a toddler I was always obsessed with collecting model cars. Um, as I got a little bit older it moved on to scale electrics, and as I got a little bit more older I just couldn't wait to actually start driving myself, so the minute I was old enough I was out doing driving lessons. Um, got my first car which was actually an MR2 so it taught me the uh, basics of driving very quick it was very back and happy shall we say it was a very difficult car to actually drive especially as a first car so I learned um, I'd say rear wheel drive discipline very soon and quickly and that just grew my passion to want to go faster as well and um, I used to go to a lot of car shows and car events and I think just the more I saw, the more I realised that my main passion actually was Japanese cars. I just love the style about them. Um, I love what the classes, the big gay wings and uh, all the body kits and stuff that came with them. I just felt like they had real character. And from there, I just kind of grew more into loving old cars that I felt like had more character than the newer style cars that we've got today. I'd say obviously my main hobby and passion is drifting, but I have just started to also take on racing, so um, a new kind of driving style for myself. I learned to go straight around corners and not sideways, which is um, proving a little bit more of a challenge than I thought, to be honest. Um, but it is great fun, so I'm looking forward to the season ahead. Um, also, a lot of people already know this about me, but obsessed with my 80s rock music. Um, terrified of spiders. Um, random when I see I do the sort of stunt work I do to be scared of, as everyone else says, tiny spiders, but to me, I see them being this big when they're coming at me, especially in my garage. And um, I think my main passion is obviously cars and motorsport, but live bands, live music is my second, and thirdly, animals, I'd say, obsession with dogs like most of the world. <laughs> So my first real contact with motorsport was um, actually a friend asking me to do a promotional day for him. So that was basically where you hire um, typically females, <laughs> if I'm honest, uh, to go to events and to kind of fly, give out flyers and stand there for photos and just interact with the crowd and try and encourage people onto a stand. And uh, so he offered me this job and it was at Ultimate Streetcar, so at Santa Ford Raceway. And that's where I started to see all the uh, dragsters and all the cool Japanese cars and there was a drift demo there as well. And that's where I saw drifting for the first time ever and I got interacting with a couple of guys um, in regards to the drifting because I'd never seen it before. To me it just looked like cars going out of control left, right and centre and waiting for them to crash any moment. And from there I then actually got offered a job with the European Drift Championship to be one of the coordinators and also one of the grid gals. And that's where I got talking to the guys and really understanding what drifting was all about. And the more I watched it, the more magnificent I thought it was. I mean, just seeing a car in full control, bellowing smoke sideways, was just something that was so spectacular for me to watch and I was just craving to give it a go. If I'm honest, I didn't really initially have any female inspirations. Um, I think when I started to get into drifting, there wasn't really many females in that sport yet. Um, and typically I wasn't that into Formula One or anything at the time, to be honest. So I didn't really have a major female role model as such. Um, so no, it literally was just a passion that was within me and just grew. And I mean, I saw myself as a tomboy anyway, so I wouldn't say I was looking out for a female inspirator at the time either. If I'm honest, it was a bit of a struggle getting into drifting initially because um, I had actually had a bit of a promotional modelling background and I feel like when I first started out I turned up to the drift days and I was wrongly judged that I was there for the attention rather than actually to learn and pursue it as a career. Um, obviously disheartening when I know the truth, like deep down I was always the biggest tomboy ever so the fact that people had this perception about me which as far as I was concerned was completely the opposite to what I really was um, was really disheartening and it, I would say it 
it did make it difficult to come to drift days because as I said I wasn't the most confident person no matter what it looked like on promotional days you're acting shall I say actually um, but deep down in an unknown environment I was the most shy person so to turn up and feel like you were being judged a little bit more than you probably would if you were a typical guy coming into the uh, events yeah I felt the pressure definitely but that said as soon as I started to turn up more and more and more and people saw that actually my heart and soul was going into this and I was progressing, I was taking it seriously, I was then quickly accepted. My first car I went for to drift in was an S14A and um, reason being I love the evil eyed look. Um, I kind of always loved that characteristic about a car. Um, I didn't know at the time, apparently actually they, want, they are one of the easiest cars to learn to drift in just because the weight ratio and stuff as well, but um, if I'm honest it was more about the style initially and then I grew to love the way it drifted and drove as well. Literally every time I sit in my car she brings a smile to my face straight away, um, nothing can beat the adrenaline rush of a track day or a drift day and uh, literally the bond I have between myself and my car is probably a bit sad if I'm honest but yeah it just gives me the biggest buzz and biggest smile. So it's really important to have a good quality tyre on your car. Um, the biggest misconception with drifting is that you do need grip and for some reason everyone seems to think that you don't want the grip but to be able to maintain a drift to particular areas of a track you need to be able to have that grip to make the manoeuvres to them sections so um, it is actually all about grip. For myself I have um, grippier tyres on the front and a little bit less on the back just to be able to spin up the wheels that little bit more at ease because I'm not running massive horsepower but the bigger the horsepower the stickier the tyres you'll need on the car so yeah tyres is key in drifting. No one expects this but my daily is actually a Passat estate. Um, anyone that's a drifter can appreciate they usually need a workhorse as well and um, you need something that's reliable and the amount of mileage I do as well, cheap to run and uh, you can fit a hell of a lot in there. So a lot of wheels and tires, spare engines, gearboxes, you name it, it's been in that car. So it's just a practical workhorse. I think the coolest car I've ever driven, stroke drifted, um, would be the Fast and Furious Live Challenger. Um, amazing car, obviously it's a very big car, but it just went sideways at such ease. It was a great car to um, handle around a small arena. So yeah, I'd say that's probably one of my favorites. As I mentioned earlier on, my biggest fear, believe it or not, is spiders. Um, as I've got older, it's got worse as well, which isn't great when you've got cars in storage and garages where they love to hide in all my wheels and tyres and <laughs> everything as well. But I'd say that was probably my biggest fear. And then, not that I show it, but heights as well. Um, the good thing is I am a bit of an adrenaline junkie and I do like being scared. So I put myself through all these things like jumping out of a plane and stuff still, just because I enjoy that buzz and that feeling. But yeah, definitely scared of heights too. I would actually say drifting has saved me in a few ways. I think um, as a youngster I was actually quite shy, so I was an only child and I didn't really feel like I had the confidence to kind of approach people and go up to people. Um, and I think getting involved in a scene where I had to rely a little bit on help and advice and building up the courage to go and talk to people, it's helped in so many ways there. But also it's given me a reason to really focus on a career because it's not a cheap hobby um, at all, so it's actually pushed me to better myself as a person, whether it would be, as I said, just in confidence in talking to people, or whether it was just to push myself hard within my career to be able to earn more money. I'd say every aspect of drifting has literally had a positive impact and pushed me just to be a better person. Um, so with drifting, obviously you're on edge the whole time, and to be honest, if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. Um, I mean, we're here at Santa Pod Raceway today, and my biggest mistake was when I first started to learn to drift. I think it was probably only my third drift day here actually and I was learning a big third gear corner and little did I know there was a bit of a, a dip in that line that we were going round and quite a few reasons that went wrong and um, all through just lack of experience was first of all I let off so 
where I've hit that dip, my harnesses weren't done up tight enough, um, so I've actually lifted up my seat a little bit, let off, and that moment that I'd done that, the car's obviously gripped and thrown me into one of the concrete walls. So, you know, 30, well, third gear, sorry, so probably, yeah, around here, maybe 30, 40 mile an hour into a concrete wall. Obviously, the car didn't come out looking too pretty, so I actually wrote her off. Um, it was a very big accident. It taught me a valuable lesson. Uh, never lift when you're flat out around a corner and also safety make sure your harnesses are always done up as tight as possible because um, yeah mistakes can easily happen but it'll be very expensive <laughs> so one thing I have to say um, is I get very very nervous just before competitions um, so just before I'm due to go out to either qualify or do my first battle you wouldn't think it looking at me because what I do is straight away turn my music up, I'll make sure there's a bit of Metallica or ACDC, something on there that's a bit kind of intimidating. I tend to tactically move, uh, or put my window down, sorry. So I'll have my music up loud, I'll have my visor down, I'll just pretend to be rocking out and uh, that tends to calm my nerves, also intimidate the other driver. So <laughs> I think taking my mind off what's about to happen and having that little gameplay then, yeah, that helps massively. <laughs> So I literally get negative comments, grab them all, put them in a box. When I'm at a drift event and I'm twinning, just let them all out and I just become a better driver. I think being a little bit aggressive is what you need when you're drifting and uh, I think if anything, negative comments just push me further and want me to do more. I just, To me, to make a negative comment, they've got to be threatened by something or there's got to be a reason because I think for someone to go out their way to make a negative comment there's more of a background story to that so I try to not take them personally but uh, if they I feel like they've hurt me a little bit I'll just store them and release them on a drift day. I'd say the biggest thing is having support around you um, keeping it to yourself isn't the best thing and I think that's where Karma are very good so they've got an online um, support centre and also a phone line that you can ring up and talk to someone I think when you're not feeling yourself, you are feeling down. If you're keeping that to yourself, there's no one out there to be able to actually show you the light at the end of the tunnel. So the more you can communicate or talk to someone, the better. So I know when I'm feeling down, it'll be either one bit of music out in my car. If it's something small, I know that can put a smile back on my face. If not, it's just communication. Like be open to people, I think as long as you've got people around you that support you, then that's the biggest thing. I think social media um, is a positive and a negative. Um, the positives I'll concentrate on for now, but yeah, I get a lot of females message me asking me how they can get into motorsport, how I've influenced them to go out and get a car and actually start drifting themselves, and them sort of messages honestly mean the world because when I was first starting out, I didn't feel like I really knew any females to communicate with and get that bit of moral support, should I say. So. Being that person now, I, I really enjoy it. So any females that message me on social media, I'll always make sure I get back to them, try and give them as much help and advice as possible because I really think just knowing that there's other people out there that can give you that bit of a push really does help. Um, whether it's at bowling or pool, they know full well if I'm going to lose, I'll sulk about it for hours after. So I think they actually dread doing anything with me that is competitive. So yeah, they would say I am extremely competitive and they wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> I would always say to my fans, if you've got a dream, pursue it. Um, I actually got told that I would never be able to afford drifting. I got warned it's a very expensive sport, hobby. Um, I got warned that there was no cheap easy way around it and being a youngster when I started out obviously minimum wage I kind of nearly let that stop me but luckily I'm the type of person that just if someone tells me I can't do something I'll make sure I can do it <laughs> so it, it actually drove me to as I said better myself in my career so progress career-wise as quickly as possible to earn that little bit more money to be able to afford it and back then if I'm honest I remember looking back at photos of drifters doing you know, third four gear entries, massive bit of smoke behind and the photos were insane. I remember thinking, I can even get a photo like that one day, I'll be the happiest person in the world. And you know, a few months later I was doing that and the next thing I know I was doing drift demos, which I never planned out to do, but it was a great feeling to be able to give them that opportunity. And then never in a million years did I think I'd be competing, but each time I just set my mind to these things and I managed to just progress with that and then to get off the stunt driving job for faster for years life, literally was a dream come true. You know, when you're younger, you have these 
images and these dream jobs, but you never think you could get there at all. And to be honest, I never in a million years thought I'd be where I am today. So it just shows with a little bit of dedication and hard work, you really can achieve anything you want to. So never let anyone put you off or say that you can't do it. Just use that determination to push you harder.